many new pitfalls, little things as trombonists we have to consider, can continually concern ourselves with. Um, idiomatic of the instrument, the slide obviously being the chief thing, the air, the articulation, the timing, the coordination of the slide and the air, the slurring passages, instruments that do not have a slide, everybody else gets to just sort of move their fingers or their valves, and the note goes from one to another without too much coordination or effort. On from bone, we're constantly across the grain, um, with the grain, up and down the pipe, there's legatos, Auto tonguing and natural slurring, all of these phenomena that are just natural to the acoustics of the instruments. The, and it's um, it's an elegant instrument. It is one of the it's the oldest, really, the chromatic first chromatic brass instrument. And so we we found our our heyday in that time. We were uh, sixteen ten Monteverdi vespers before that. We're doubling choirs. We're doubling. Voices because we can go up and down and play chromatic. The horns we're putting crooks in, trumpets have just a few uh, at the time uh, keys that they could play in, in terms of how they were pitched. Natural trumpet, they had to um, kind of half bow things to make notes that would sound uh, not quite in the diatonic scale. So the trombone is really, I think, has unchanged, it's been completely unchanged since its inception. Some advancements in valves, some advancements in, in, in you know. Metallurgy and the, the tolerances, but really it's just the same as it was virtually um, hundreds of years ago. Um, so today we're going to hear uh, Jordan on bass trombone, and he's going to play a solo by Anthony Di Lorenzo. Um, it's, it's new to me, I've not heard it. Um, it seems like I, it's, it's quite technical, I would say. Yeah, so it seems to be quite um, involved. And so we'll make some sense out of that. And he may play some excerpts or two. So, um, and, and then of course, uh, Austin's going to play uh, a list, a short list. So what we do as orchestral students, uh, we're trying to ultimately win a job in an orchestra, a major symphony orchestra. And part of the process involves being a student of the repertoire and understanding the orchestral repertoire and how to perform and play. So we're switching. Um, in one audition, you might play a Mozart and then followed by a Berlioz, followed by a Wagner opera back to perhaps Rossini. So we're, we're switching genres, we're switching styles, just the very nature of the instrument and the dynamic that we play in. The approach, you know, things have to swing wildly back and forth. And so really learning how to, to take an audition is in fact a skill all, all, all its own. Um, so Austin will be doing that. And then um, Lauren will be playing a little bit as well. She'll, she'll do a few excerpts. She's going to do, I guess, Sarah Vaughn from uh, a Bach show suite and some other things. And then I think Brandon's going to play got some leader from Beethoven, right? And then perhaps an excerpt or two, right? And then Zachary here, we might play a little bit later. So I'll do my best to sort of educate and keep you uh, up to speed in terms of what we're doing. There might be some detail, there might be some back and forth, I don't know. This is a, a, the experience for us all. That's why I, I enjoy this so much. I have been working with all of these students um, since the beginning of the festival. So I mean, actually, I was thinking about this this morning. By the time the festival was over, that would have been six weeks of lessons. That's almost half a semester in terms of an academic year. And so it's really a privilege for me to see you know, the work that they're doing, not because of me, but just almost in spite. And we're able to hear and do different things and work on different, different elements of playing and stuff and overcome some things and talk a little bit about just our approach, and I have the luxury to play in a session with them from time to time. Anyways, I really enjoy this, so thank you for letting me be here to be a part of this. My name is Brent Phillips. I'm a trombone professor at Baylor University. I've been there 20 years. Before that, I was the president of the United States Marine Band for nine years. Um, and I continue to, as much as possible, be a student and a player as much as I can. Um, I feel like inspired teaching, teaching that motivates me, player and my students happens to come from a place of demonstration and playing. If I'm on my game and I'm sounding great and feeling well and practicing and playing and involved creatively, musically, in the art of playing music, then my students come right along with me and we have a good time together. It's a difficult balance because as you know, teaching takes quite a bit of time, but I'm here for you. Okay, we're going to jump in. Let's hear a little Taylor. Thank uh... 
have, as you can tell, about every three lines we have a new tonal center. And so we're just shifting colors, we're just shifting sort of blocks of tonality. And I think with each of these shifts, a little bit of a style change happens too, right? So we go from this sort of, um, I don't know, it's kind of a uh, Ewok call thing, I think, that I keep hearing, you know. <laughs>
and move this like right up and down. Did you hear this in here? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
think it comes across as you have a statement to make. You're at the bar and you're talking about how you you know you you, you won this war. And you're boasting about. I mean, it's you're not asking for permission. You're actually telling them exactly what you think. Good. Now, one thing I'd like you to think about. He studies with the great Blair Bollinger, who's the bass trombonist of the Philadelphia Orchestra. I would never say anything to contradict with Maestro Bollinger, who is the one of the most amazing bass trombone players of our time, would say. So, what I'm telling you should be taken with a grain of salt. And I'm an additional voice, but I'm not your primary teacher. I would say continue with the eighth notes that are have staccato, but make sure that the sound is not clipped. So there's a difference between going is what I think what I think you did. <laughs>
responsible for everything, it's in some ways um, a much more challenging instrument because of the friendship that you have to do. Yeah. You have to worship. So that's a very workable range. Congratulations. Jordan is a uh, this junior, sophomore at Julia. He's a fantastic player. Give him a hand. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, um, okay, let's be honest. How many do you think it would advance out of the first round? Maybe. Yeah, I know. It's nice. It's, a, it's called. So there's some really nice things about your playing that make me want to hear more. Right. So because you missed a note or cracked a note, um, maybe for some colleagues I've had in the past that would be like, I'd say you done. Right. And, 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 and I know that there are audition rounds that happen currently where they are looking for, I don't know, Jesus Christ to come in for the first round, where it's absolutely perfection. Yeah. And that's, that's okay, fine. That's what they want, that's what they get. But if it, if it were me, and you're playing well in tune, stylistically really nice, your sound is great and controlled, musically you have a lot to say. The pitch is good, the pitch is really good. Yeah. Some things, but really good. Then you've checked off all the boxes. Accuracy, production, a little crack note here and there. If you go into an audition and your goal is to not crack or miss a note, which that's not a bad goal. We all kind of do that. I mean, if you're going in there and cracking notes, then yeah, let's I mean, we have to take care of that. But my experience has been if you're going there trying not to miss a note, then you're playing defensively and your posture is careful and tentative and you generally sound that way. And even if you don't miss a note, you've already shown them that you necessarily don't have a lot to say. Right. You you have a good sound. There's a lot of great things in your in your playing. I would want to hear more. If it were me, maybe I don't know. I don't want to be picky right now. I want to, I want I want to cast a large net. And let's get down to the semis and finals, mm -hmm. and then we can really see what we have. Yeah. So many times this happens. A really great player didn't get past the next round, and then it comes to the finals. They don't pay you that. Okay, so 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 maybe maybe let's be more liberal in our in our in our in our applicant pool for a lot of reasons, not just playing, but we'll talk about that later. So um, I think your Lagaza lottery sound is a little bit too uh, it's really strong. It's really strong. It's too big. I don't know. You're kind of at this sort of uh, <laughs> Yeah. 
Max on the D. That was really great. I feel like we're picking up time in the octaves. Okay. Can I say that? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Like a press, yeah. Right. <laughs> 
In an excerpt like this, or you yeah. show that you have a, new, a sense of nuance. And well, it's it's tough because like here, like I'm always like, you know, tempo is not tough. This is like a time excerpt. Like this this tempo needs to be the same as this right, tempo, right. which no, is the same as this tempo. But also, yeah, like within the line, as I establish a tempo, I feel like I get yeah. more of a sense of bravado. I think you would be okay to do that. Yeah. Okay. Talk to your professor, but I feel like it would be yeah. very very appropriate as long as it doesn't sound like. Sure. Yeah, exactly. It has to be, you know, a vocal system that the, the bass is going to do that. Yeah. They're going to take, there's some, there, there's some liberties, right? Okay. Um, and the last thing I'll say, um, because of the score, I know you know the score, but, you know, this measure here, I know we've talked about it, we're going to have the class over again, but anyway. <laughs> Please, God, I think 
One thing. This is a time actor. Yes. So the Dali is a concerto, but it's like the mo it's like an excerpt, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's become the standard yeah. piece that we all have to play. Every articulation, every nuance, every single rhythm, everything has to be really in its package and its yeah. place. But but but, and this is an important but, it has to sound easy. Mm -hmm. And it is, sort of, but not in places. Yeah. Make it sound easy. Okay. In those places that aren't easy, just relax and let it go and get to the point where it sounds easy. Okay. Whether you have to record yourself doing that, video yourself doing that, singing through it, you know, you have to compartmentalize the little nuggets of technique that are challenging to you. Yeah. For me, it's a lot of first and fourth. <laughs> So, so 
not yeah. to read well. And it's just I think if they're shorter, the chances of missing in this tone and the yeah. articulation, everything is just not as not as not yeah. as clear.
Joe Sweet. Some places were not even allowed to play bar Joe Sweets. That's so unconventional. In and out of the lowest valve range, and it doesn't lie well on the instrument. It presents so many little problems, but it's, you know, obviously some of the greatest music ever composed. And so I think it's on the list because, well, it presents a lot of challenges and choices that we have to make with our breathing, choices we have to make with uh, our phrasing and the tempo and slotting in and out. I mean, it's just, it's hard to do all that and still sound like To sound like a cello, of all things, that doesn't have to breathe and plays just seamlessly across all of these frets and, and strings. So it, it's a, I think it's one of the most challenging pieces. And to stand up here and do it cold in front of you on the spot is commendable. So the first thing I would say to Lauren is your musical choices are great. They're really, really defined. And I can hear what you're doing. The way you move through the phrase, and the, the way you relax the phrase, Side certain beats in a bar cello suite in the Cerebon, usually it's beat two that has a bit of an emphasis. The first two measures kind of stand alone. And then we have a two bar phrase, and then we have a four bar phrase. In this case, we're not taking the repeat. And we have these notes that have to connect to the low vowel. So, response was a bit of an issue. But I yeah. know that it wouldn't be normally if you had a few seconds. Well, it would have helped the warm up, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's it's a real thing. So, let's see, how do we overcome?
has come before. Particularly if Bach. If it's Goza, I'll just do whatever I want to do. But if it's Bach, I feel like there's a certain amount of precedent that's been set. So let's do that once more. I think 
that's, that gets you in trouble. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to play soft and to play nuanced, but I think you still have to have a feeling of the sound going up and out and into the, this sort of, you know, almost worshipful way. It's not about you. A box set line is not about how I feel. It's about, it's like an offering. Does this make sense? It's like something you're giving. It's, it's something that you want to, Experience so it's like, a, it's like a testament. It's not, and as soon as we start to make it kind of like all about how we do something, then I feel like it can take a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe maybe that's just overthinking it, but I feel like there's a certain way to play bar mentally. And it's actually really important. It has a lot to do with how it actually sounds. You know, you want to play something else? Well, should play the bar piece of it. We probably should. Give more.
pitch is going to get better. Try, try the next one. And, and you are this great baritone. And you're, I don't know what the words are. And so I don't speak German. I can't read those. I don't know what the words are. But we should probably learn what the words are. <laughs> and there's some story. There's some meaning. There's something happening. There's this thing you love.
right? I'm not sure. It's like they're so stark. And I think with the piano company, yeah, like the piano a little more lovely. Yeah. In, 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 in a context like this, it's a little bit strange. But yeah, so you need more life. You need more direction. Not in life, but in in the music. You need more direction in terms of where you're going. I need to hear architecture and shape. I need to hear suspensions. I think these half steps need to be much more sort of clear. Sometimes I'm like, well, I don't know, but we tend to be kind of floating. So just be conscious of that. Yeah. All right, let's do some meals. Then we'll call it a day. I'm so sorry, Zach. Worry. Let's get we'll get together next week. I promise. This is a Nielsen 4, the inextinguishable, and I'm going to just like keep keep you on track, all right? So this is me being less than tolerant of you not being in time. Okay. <laughs> all right, and I might play with you a second. Sure. Uh, just a Okay, get 10. Uh, remember, full notes. All right, so who's next?
breaths, slowing slightly, a tiny bit behind the beat all the time, possibly will cause others consternation. So be on the money. Always have, of course, we would be, we would be sitting here and I would be sitting over there in a different place, but always have your right ear going right towards what is happening up, up the section. Um, you have a lot of liberties as the tubist, and then, and then you're a team with the bass and player, but really it's one line, and if you have slight hesitation, a little bit of delay, and it kind of goes down the line, and it ends up in your lap, and suddenly you have a tendency to be slightly behind, then there's a big tear, right? And the orchestra is sort of going to sound, I mean, it, it potentially can be frustrating, so always stay on top of the beat. Do not forsake metronomic practice, and you should have a metronome going, and you should have beats that, that are dropped. So, like, you're just in and out, and go back and record this, get play, conduct, and sing, and find out where you're behind. I firmly believe any of us can play with a metronome. Playing with a metronome is not challenging. I mean, like, I can play really great with a metronome. It takes all the responsibility off my shoulders and all I'm doing is reacting to the metronome. I have a pretty good sense of pulse from one beat to the next. Playing in time without a metronome, that's challenging. And you'd be surprised when you record yourself continually and you go back and you listen. Things that you do that you did not know you were doing, that you were completely unaware of. Um, that's the level of accountability and scrutiny that you need to have in your own playing so that somebody else has to have that in your playing. And I promise you in an audition, if your sense of time and rhythm is slightly delayed or always kind of verging on trending slower from the time you started that excerpt, you know, you have a lot of success and you've played professionally. And I think you should continue to do that. And there's no reason why that can't continue. But I want to caution you, the time thing is really important. And you just, you know, work on that. Your sound is good. Pitch we're going to get better on, right? Your, um, Things you do on tuba in the orchestra are getting through. There's really great things. But keep your time going. Really be, be conscious of that. I think when you're mindful of it, it's better. Many times you just kind of, I don't, I don't know, you might be in your home. You're thinking about other things. You might be distracted by some other element of the music. We are a slave to time. Time is our master. We don't, we don't mess with it, right? Now, if we're playing a seraphon or some concerto or something, that we're doing, we have the ability within a certain time frame to give and take, like in the Mozart, Rubato was to rob, to steal time, but you actually have to give it back. That requires even better pulse. So if your pulse is not so great and you're trying to use Rubato, then, we're, then it's a complete mess. So we really need to consciously, consciously work on that. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you.